is going on, everyone? It's episode 178, recorded on Sunday, August 13th, 2023. I'm John, back from New York, and hey, Drew! Three explorers, John, Drew, and Kevin, get lost in a huge jungle. After wandering around for days, they're found and captured by a local tribe. The tribesmen take the explorers to their leader and drop them at his feet. The chieftain looks at them with disdain and exclaims, the three of you will die unless you manage to do a near impossible task. Each of you must gather 10 fruits of the same kind and bring them to me. The explorers can't believe their luck at being given such an easy task. They set out on their separate ways to find fruits as fast as they can. John finds an apple tree and quickly gathers 10 of them. Nearby, Drew finds some cherries and plucks a bunch. They rush to the chieftain and present the fruits. The chieftain smiles and says, Now, for your near impossible task, you must shove them up your ass one by one, and if you make any noise or facial expression, I shall have you killed. John, with his apples, resigned to his fate, puts on a brave face and starts shoving the apples up. He gets to four, but can't take it anymore. As soon as he yells in despair, the chieftain takes his knife and slits his throat, leaving him to bleed out on the ground violent i know he reaches the pearly gates and while he's walking in he hears drew running to catch up with him why are you here john asks i thought you only had 10 small cherries with you drew laughs and says well john i was doing fine and i was just about to slide the 10th cherry up inside without a problem but then kevin came walking into the tent with pineapples and i burst out laughing <laughs> Drew loves nature and thinks John's a cheater. That's right, it's time for another episode of the Dads After Dark show. Take it away, boys. What is up, everybody? On tonight's episode, we talk the only thing that matters. Me. Dads in Denver live that for too. Extra Life. And of course, there's a variety of weird questions because John was in New York on vacation. And I wrote all of the notes. So who knows what we're going to get? John, I, I have Very nothing wordy. to share over the last two weeks. All I want to hear about is your road trip to the Big Apple. I am so glad to be back. I got back at three it's three and a half hours ago. We got back. Uh, that was a weird vacation. Uh, we were gone for basically 10 days. Five of them were spent in New York and Ohio, five of them were spent driving. Oh my God. It was a weird vacation, but, um, you know, I hadn't seen my mom and dad in like four years. And, um, like I said, Cedric had his summer job and the, and the minute it ended, we picked him up and we left. So wow. we had, and then we came back and the kids start school on Tuesday. Oh. And to top it all off tomorrow, Cedric has his driver's test. Holy oh. shit. And to top that off, we have to finish getting to his 50 hours. He's two minutes shy. Um, two minutes? Like, Can you just lie? He did like an hour and a half. No, it's like it's based on an app. He did uh, like an hour and a half driving on the highway uh, on the way to New York. But uh, we wanted to save the last two minutes for like a special drive. So I'm going to do that tomorrow morning with him. Then they got to go to the dentist. Wait, wait, what's a special drive? Like you going to take him to the strip club or something? No, no, oh, no. But, oh. you know, we, we didn't want it to be just some like gross like highway drive through ohio or something like that so uh nothing against ohio but we wanted it to be like a drive in our neighborhood or something so uh, we got to do that morning but yeah uh then he's got school so it's a crazy freaking week and then at the end of this week you guys show up yes so it's i can't believe nuts. it's almost there um it's i will crazy. say really quick, i have tomorrow off state holiday did you know john victory day is celebrated oh here this is that weird rhode island, island thing right well, I mean, it's not a Rhode Island thing. It's the day we, I mean, to be blunt, it's Victory Over Japan Day. It's the day we beat the Japanese and we celebrate it for God knows whatever reason. I know. Nobody else gets that holiday. No. So I have tomorrow off from work. I took Wednesday off. Take the family. We're going to do like the, the big state county fair. And then Friday's off because I'm coming to Denver. Woo! So 
Tuesday and Thursday is my only work week, and uh, can't believe we're here. I, I, it's crazy. No, it it's is. that's that's nuts. We get the touch, um, you know, which we talked about. Uh, our crotches will be inches away from each other. There will be, there will be crotching. There will be crotching. much crotching. Uh, no, it'll be all on the up and up. We, why, the plan. We have some really fun plans for Friday. I'm looking forward to Friday. Um, mm. You know, seeing you guys. We got some. We've got some fun in store. Uh, nothing. We're not good. We're look, guy. We're not doing strip clubs over here. We're, uh, it's, it's on the agenda. We're all married with kids. Uh, I, I'm not going to be like telling those stories. So that's not. But we have lots of fun stuff planned i don't i don't want i don't want to say i don't know if it's a secret or not so i'm not gonna, ah, I'm not say, gonna it. say it there's no secret what, what are we doing friday and we're doing an escape room we're doing an escape room oh so. we are but that's a surprise to me then yeah uh so that well, we're that's gonna, gonna be Nintendo live first I freaking love escape rooms what, what's it called not Nintendo live what's the what's the tour it's, uh uh, uh, uh <laughs> i just want to say nintendo minute it's no it is i think it's nintendo live it's it's confusing is it live the event in september Oh, it's like oh, the live summer tour. Yeah. Whatever it's called. What is that called? I don't know. We're doing that though, aren't we? Uh, we're doing that. I think I, we, nobody cares about this. Do we're they doing have merch with that? Or, or is it just a know. weird shit taped the scavenger hunt mm, thing? Nintendo summer of play. That's what I'm looking for. We're yeah, doing that. Yeah. We got that and we're going to go some, get some dinner. And yeah, then we got to do what some time to sit state room plans. I'm going to need some uh, intoxication before nobody that cares. We'll figure it out. Don't worry. They don't care. We have a big show today. I'm not talking about okay. show times or anything like that, but we're going to have a lot of fun on Friday. We're going to have a blast all day Saturday. And then we've got some stuff planned on Sunday. I can't I can't wait. We're going to have tons of pictures and, and lots to show. So it's going to be fun. And, you know, the who's is going to make a video and put it on YouTube. I can't wait. Um, that's going to be fantastic. Speaking of Nintendo, I went to the world store. Well, was that? God, I went to the world store twice. So long since I've been. I know you went back. I went back. We went. We went on Sunday with a couple of friends. Um, uh, one of them wasn't doing too well. She had a bad knee, and um, so we rushed up to the Nintendo World Store because we thought we'd only be in the city one time. Now I feel bad because we ended up going downtown again anyway, and we didn't need to drag her all the way up to Midtown to go there. And uh, but it was fun. Although on Sunday it was really crowded. It's kind of warm in there. It was it was hard to really enjoy. And then we went back up there on uh, Wednesday, and uh, it was much less crowded. Is you know the work week? How much did you spend? I spent four hundred and twenty dollars on Sunday, and then I went back and we spent like a hundred and sixty dollars. I love I to, you. I had to get you I guys gifts. You. I, I had to get I, you guys gifts. I love it. Uh, Michelle is pissed the fuck off because they did not have anything Ochi there. Oh, so I fucking love Ochi. Mad. I'm There's... pissed. Tell Michelle I'm pissed with her. There's <laughs> yeah. not a licensed Ochi toy out there. I looked. There's nothing. It's, it's bizarre. I don't. I mean, they, they, they had to know it was going to be a, an easy hit. So, I, I agree. That weird. It, so it, has she been playing it? Oh, we'll talk about that later. Or, or... Uh, let's talk about that later. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then on the way home, we went to Cedar Point, which is uh, the roller coaster capital of the world. It was so cool. Tim has been there and actually knew a lot about it. Uh, it's not too far away from him. But if you live near Ohio, mm. Cedar Point was awesome. It's on so, this island mm -hmm. in the water. You drive over this long bridge to get there. There are seagulls all over the fucking place. When we were leaving, the whole parking lot was taken over by seagulls. It was, it shit was on? hilarious. I didn't. I did not. Good for you. Um, but it did rain like crazy. We 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 missed out on the quote unquote best roller coaster because we just we it started raining at around five, I mm -hmm. think, and it just would not let up. And eventually we were soaked to the bone. Let me ask you, is 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 it as good as like, would you go there for like an extended weekend? Like there's other stuff to do. I think they have like like the, the boardwalk and stuff too. like, mm -hmm. is it worth going there for like a three night stay or is it? No. I'm not maybe, saying you go to the park for three days, but maybe two. There is a water park yeah. that's, I believe, separate. Um, I thought it was part of Cedar Point. Yeah, it's part of the Cedar Point area, okay. and it's right next to it. Like I, at one point, I saw some woman just walking through the park in a bikini because she had been in the the water park area. So it was like shares the parking lot. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I could see doing Cedar Point one day, a full day. Yep. And then doing the water park. And then either doing a little bit more Cedar Point, maybe there's a roller coaster you want to do yeah. again, um, or there's a boardwalk, or there's other stuff. Yeah, yeah, so yeah. two days, I would say two days yeah. would be. I'm, I'm thinking cool. maybe when the kids are older, we could maybe do that trip. 
Yeah, once they're like what forty eight inches. Well, they both are, but I figured okay. still okay. I want to be able to to be out and go twelve hour days without being tired. Right. Um, yeah, we did like just methodically roller coaster after roller coaster. Uh, they were they were good ones. There were some old ones. Uh, Blue Streak just almost like broke our bones. It's it's the <laughs> oldest coaster there. It's the oldest ride in the whole park. Mm-hmm. And it is like nearly broke our bones. Um, but uh, Steel Vengeance was the craziest coaster we got to do. And it has a 90 degree drop. And it's funny because you you weren't even allowed to have like your wallet and phone in your that's pocket. The, you know when you that's like the new thing though. Every ride is like that nowadays. When I went to Sits Flags, it was like that. Uh-huh. They make yeah. you take stuff out of your pocket. Yeah, I don't think. I mean, like this one. You know when like the seat comes down and locks you in. Mm-hmm. This one had like leg locks too. Like they okay. they wanted you pinned. Um, and so yeah, like I think it would have you it wouldn't have been able to like clamp down. Gotcha. Um, but Steel Vengeance was nuts. I mean, that whole ride, I was just like screaming my brains out. It was like, it was are terrifying. you a screamer? Uh, like an, an excited, excited excite, screamer. Excite not a terror screamer. Like, yeah. yeah, I'm yeah, like, yeah. Ah. Um, there was like three inversions and then the big drop and it was fast like fuck. And it was great. I would have done it again, but it was an hour and a half wait. Whoa. And Michelle, who was not going to do that ride, just had to wait around for an hour and a half for us. So you and the kids went on. So she yes, just. Sir. She yep. scrolled through her phone for OG plushies and came up short. Yeah. The ride was 45 minutes. When we went on, the, the wait was 45 minutes, but then it became uh, an hour and a half. So that sucks. Um, but we didn't get to do Maverick, which is like supposedly the best one. But we did do one of my new favorite coasters, Millennium Force, which is a 300 foot climb oh. and then like a 300 foot drop. And it is a steep drop. It's not 90, but it's a very steep drop. And it, it like you feel like you're dropping for a long time, you know, like you go down a coaster <laughs> yeah. and you're like, whoa, and then you're like, hey, this one's like, whoa, it's just, I, I would do that ride a hundred times in a row. The wait was uh, only 15 minutes. We did it early, but then we went and did other rides because yeah, yeah. the best part about an amusement park you've never been to is every ride is a new experience. I, isn't that the best feeling? It's, it's really the best. It's the best. Um, but the downside is you don't understand how the park works. So later True. on, that ride became an hour wait. And it's like, if I'd have known 15 minutes was a really good wait time, I would have just done it again before mm-hmm. we did like some other shitty ones. It must have been crowded if all these rides have like over hour waits, right? It's funny because it's crowded. It wasn't crowded. Like if you go to Disney, that's crowded. Yeah, but it must have been a lot of people in lines. There were. Like that's where yeah. all the people were. Uh, there was like three or four that had the, the longer wait times. And then other ones were like 10, five minutes, 15. Okay. Um, like but it really took so the, the most ones, intense yeah. ones. Yeah, really sucked up the people. And when you walk around the park, it, it, it wasn't crowded at all. It was great. You could move <laughs> around. You get sick of Disney sometimes. You just always like shoulder to shoulder in the heat with people. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was great. I'm, I'm, I'm getting addicted to going to new amusement parks. We did Hershey yeah. Park four years ago. And now we did this hey, one. That's not and that, too far from me. Yeah, we're talking about going to there's a park in Kansas City that we could drive to in a day. Mm-hmm. Um, stuff like that. But like we're trying to find parks that are closer by Denver is in, is like a donut hole. Mm-hmm. There's nothing around us. Lego, Lego lands are kind of fun, but you're getting the kids into the age where they might be outgrowing them a little bit. I mean, they have some really cool adult rides, but they also have a lot of kitty rides. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sebastian is definitely the thrill seeker, but he also loves Lego, so that might, might also work. It. Um, I, I feel like going to Cedar Point might have broken us a little bit. There is now another park in Ohio, which is owned by the same company. I think it's Kings Point or something. Okay. Um, very similar to Cedar Point. So we want to do that again in the future. We just don't know when, but um, we will. It was great. It was a lot nice. of fun. I'm glad to be home, though. Uh, lots of laundry to do and that sort of thing. Oh, but okay. but we're here. And we, we got extra life to talk about. So let's get to it. Let's talk about Manscaped. Let's do that. Because today we're here with a sponsor for your bouncing bundle of joy. No, we're not talking about a baby. We're talking about your baby makers. That's right. Today's show is brought to you by Manscaped. But just like babies, your delicate little guys have sensitive skin and deserve products that are not only skin safe, but made with a safe ingredients. That's where Manscaped Platinum Package comes in from razors to shower care. This package goes above the gold standard for your body hair. So treat your beautiful boys to the world's finest toys at Manscaped.com. Use the code NINDADS, N-I-N-D-A-D-S, for 20% off. 
plus free shipping. Just used this code uh, about a week or two ago. I had this more shampoo. But um, yeah, manscape it up. <laughs> manscape it up. Is that, is that, did you just make that up? I did. I just All did right. It on the I fly. Like I like it. I haven't manscaped in 11 days. I'm going to manscape tomorrow, I think. <laughs> just in case. I need to for Denver. I need to be, need to be fresh. <laughs> All right. Let's get right to the meat. Uh, again, check out our Substack. We're going to have a new post this week. Dad's After Dark Show. Substack.com. It has our merch. It has our socials and all that. Um, that's all. I mean, like I say that every week, um, but I will be posting about Extra Life this week, and it's going to have all of our mm. rules and things you need to know. I don't think it's complicated, but it's interesting, and we'll talk about it more later. So we're going to have a post there. So if mm -hmm. anybody needs to come back and say, okay, what are the distinct rules? We're going to have all of the ground rules written down over there. So, so come check out our sub stack, but man, I, I feel like I shouldn't even run through the meat because I, I kind of missed a lot of the news. So why don't you run through the we, meat? I, I'll this be, week? I, you I'd did the work. Do that. So yeah, Devolver digital came out with what seemed very similar to a Nintendo direct. Some may say, but this was called Devolver delayed. And they pretty much just told you about all their games that are being delayed. Uh, have you watched this yet, John? I, I I did finally watch it right before the show. Thank God it was only like two and a half minutes. It's, so. it's short. Yeah. So uh, getting right to it, then we'll talk about it for a second. But the Plucky Squire, stitch it to the Stitman, Skate Story, Anderfoot, and Pepper Grinder, which is another one people are really looking forward to, all delayed till 2024. Now, I want to talk about the way they presented this direct just for 30 seconds, because I guess I'm going to ask the question. It was very blatantly laid out there as fun but also like poking at themselves for missing days and i know they're there i i had this conversation with handbone a little bit he says you know that's their style and they're really just the publishers they're not developers blah, blah 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 but at the end of the day is it okay to pretty much just make a joke about missing missing dates missing deadlines like, i know if i did that at my job and i had to go call up the navy and say hey sorry i'm gonna slip this date till next year I'm fucking fired. <laughs> you, you, you know what I'm saying though? Like, yeah. What's your thoughts on that? I'm, I'm okay with it because remember if the developers went to the publisher with a delay, they're going to, they're going to come hat in hand and they're, they're not going to do it like this. This is the publisher to the people. So they're trying sure. to make it funny. I mean, I, I have criticized uh, Devolver Digital Direct. I can't even remember their name half the time. <laughs> I, I have, I have criticized Devolver Digital Digital Devolver? What the fuck is Devolver it? Devolver Digital. Devolver Digital. Um, I've criticized them in the past for their E3 presentations. I think I think they just get way too into themselves. It's weird, but whatever. They make great games. Um, this I have no problems with. It was two and a half minutes. It wasn't like a 30-minute thing to string you along. Uh, they were kind of making fun of themselves for the delays, probably giving some good cover to the developers, giving people a laugh. I was fine with it, you know. I'm, I mean, I'm, honestly, I'm more disappointed that the Plucky Squire and Pepper Grinder got delayed. But games get delayed all the time or whatever. It is weird that five games got delayed. I don't know what that's about. Yeah, it, it's a lot, right? I think that's, that's a that's, lot. That's part of it, right? I agree. Um, I don't know. That, that's, that's really the news for it. I mean, I don't know what else to really say about it. but they did. They did name a bunch of games that are coming out. Which we already uh, knew. It's just, I mean, we already knew. It's just yeah. it was a reminder. I think, I mean, Gunbrella's coming out. The other games, uh, you, but you know, know, I don't it's, know. It's, it's funny because, like, let's use Gunbrella, for example. People are like, all right, but you know what? Gunbrella's still on track. Yeah, we don't have to celebrate that. Like, it's supposed they, to be. They told us that. It's supposed to be. <laughs> because they put it in this direct, it made it look like it was a hero. No, it's not. Uh, this I, is a good time. It's a good time to point out, though, that when delays happen, it does lower the hype and it shouldn't. But like, I have been excited for Plucky Squire, but I feel like we've known about it for what, like two years now. And I'm like, I'm starting to lose my hype over it. Like it, it shouldn't be that way. Mm. When a game comes out, you should just be hyped. But I'm getting a little sick and tired of talking about Plucky Squire. And now it's delayed to 2024, which is a long time. This is August. Mm. This isn't like November, Agreed. right? There, there was still five more months left in the year yeah. you know what i mean I, so it's like oh, come on you know like eh, whatever i hear you I um, hear you. yeah I've, I've lost my i've lost my hype for pepper grinder and, and plucky squire they got to win it back i agree with that 
All right, Travis, that's a bit of news. Let me go on my soapbox tangent here for a minute and vent, and then you can comment. But Red Dead Redemption is coming to the Nintendo Switch and many other consoles, and I have a few things to say. One, tell me why the fuck I should care about a game that's going to cost me $50 that came out in May of 2010, <laughs> and why people think it's okay, right? Let me give you an analogy here. You know what came out in May of 2010, John? Your the mom. last season of Lost, right? So let me <laughs> oh let, hold, hold on, hold on a second here. If if I were to announce tomorrow that the the last season of Lost is going to come re-released in HD, coming to Netflix, who the fuck is going to care? Nobody's going to care, and that's my point. Us as a video game society needs to stop giving a flying fuck about games that are being remade from 15 years ago. I don't care. But you know what it is? We allow it to happen. And I am fed up with this garbage. No more. <laughs> the floor is yours, John. <laughs> I'm going to start off my floor with a rant. Okay. We have a group chat between the four of us. And and nobody knows this, but for some reason, sometimes when I state an opinion, these other three fuckers just pile on me like a gangbang. And I'm in New York, I'm having a good time, and I see the news that Red Dead Redemption's coming to Switch. Now, mm. in the past, I have said on this show, like, you know when you have the question, what's, like, the one game you'd love to see ported sure. to the Switch? At one, I, Red Dead was on that list. I want to see a Red Dead Redemption. I said I wanted to see, like, a remaster. Okay. But I was excited. It's like, holy shit, I can play Red Dead Redemption on the Switch now. And I was, like, trying to watch the video. And I come into the group, and I go, Red Dead! And this is literally the first response. Bob Cousy writes, nobody cares. That and the Arkham games are 87 years old. Switch has officially jumped the shark. It's Luna time. And then Drew writes, this is the, the, the most accurate statement I've heard in years. Who pissed in your Wheaties, man? <laughs> you don't even care about it. No. Uh, let me tell you why you should care and why you shouldn't care. Okay. Red Dead Redemption is excellent. Uh, I think it's better than the second game. Um, second game looks better. The second game has, you know, more detail and all that stuff. It came out uh, just a few years ago, but it is fucking like everything you do in that game takes an hour. Red Dead Redemption doesn't have that problem. Red Dead has a, it's an open world. It was one of the first open world games I played, actually. Is it um, first an, person or third? No, it's third person. Um, it's an open world in the in the old west um, it's got tons of like cool main quests and side quests, you know, all the shit you do, collecting plants and all that fuckery. Right. What? And it was my first open world game. <laughs> you sold me. Yeah. You collect and, plants. I'm in. And when I played it, uh, I didn't really know what to do with this kind of game. And so I I basically mainlined it for the most part. I mainlined it. And then I was done with it. I didn't like go and like try to do everything. The map is like half unexplored, all of that. And so I've been wanting to play it again. Also, it has a DLC, Undead Nightmare, um, where it's basically zombies. And uh, I've been wanting to go back to it and play it and try to 100% it and whatever. I think I would enjoy it even more. But I have it on PS3, and I don't want to sit in my basement and play it. It's got a great story. It's got great action. It has like a slow motion, like shooting thing. Uh, weapon Why upgrading. Why are you selling this game? It's fun. The quests are fun. They're interesting. It's not like repetitive. Are you going to play it? It has one of the great little endings um, I've ever played in a game. Here's the problem. It's come. It's fifty dollars. I don't even care about that. I no, honestly no. You don't. should care about it. And and I want to I want to send out a special thank you to IGN, NVC, and Game Scoop both took a fucking gigantic shit on this game for coming out at $50. The game scoop guys were just laughing. Like this is, it's so stupid. $50. The guy was saying it should be like 20 or $30 at most. Um, they it's, it's not upgraded to 60 frames per second. And they, at least they haven't said, um, God, I'm getting PayPal asking me for my security code again. So it makes me so nervous. Um, it's, like, what are you doing? It's bizarro world. I don't get it. Um, I I, I want to play it. I want to play it really badly. I do. I want to play it really badly. There's no way I can pay 50 bucks for it. And remember the last time 
the last time there was a uh, port by Rockstar was was GTA. Remember the trilogy? Mm -hmm. And that was like full of bugs. It was a disaster. And now they're putting this out for fifty dollars. Who's to say this one is not buggy as hell? I don't know. Um, there's just no way I'm going to buy it at fifty dollars. And I really hope they figure it out and get some goodwill and go. You know what? We change our mind. We're going to sell it for like forty or thirty-five or whatever. Um, Rockstar is really hurting themselves lately. I don't know why they're doing all this self-inflicted stuff, but it's going to go on my wish list. Should you play it? Yeah, I think you'd like it. Oh. Um, I I can't. I just. I just went on the soapbox. I can't. I can't go back against my word. You absolutely can get. What's off. the release date on this? Uh, I think it's August seventeenth. It's coming out Tuesday. Or no, Sounds it's like it could be a good plane. Good plane game. Thursday. Um, yeah, I don't know if it's a great plane game, but it's it's fun. And uh, but I, I I would definitely sit back and see reviews and see you know see how it works. Um, I, it, it could be bad. It could be a bad port. Well, I don't know. Anyways. Red Dead Redemption, but I will talk about a good awesome. playing game that I'm disappointed with, John, because Wrestle Quest is delayed at the twelfth hour, and man, this one hurts because this was going to be a playing game. So they came out and said Ooh, yeah. a serious technical glitch was the source of the delay um, when performing final chats on one of our launch platforms, probably the Switch. Because let's be honest, it's always the Switch. No, we discovered it was possible for players to lose their save game progress. When playing Russell Quest on multiple different devices, so sure, whatever. I, I the the weird part was this was legit the day it was supposed to be released. Like people are waiting for it to download, and then, bam, nope, sorry, delayed. I believe until like August twenty second. So almost like at least two weeks after it's supposed to come out. Now, in my research that I was doing here, John, for the notes, I did come across something that was very shocking to me that the main story for this game is over 40 hours. And that honestly the, uh, is a turnoff. That is a turnoff. Like this should be a 15 hour game. This is like a, like golf story length, like 40 <laughs> hours for just the main story. Seems oh like, no. <laughs> oh yeah. no, it's right. That, that's, that's a, that's um, a lot for this type of game in my eyes. I, I don't like I don't like when games tell you how long the main quest is because it almost like ruins like uh, when, when it's going to end. I don't know if that's a maybe a minor gripe, but 40 hours seems like a long time. I feel like main quest should be shorter, but then give me lots of extra stuff to do. But don't make it part of the main quest. Let me be able to finish it in yeah. 15 hours. Or there's a lot then, of matches, right? And, and I don't know, maybe the matches, yeah. some matches take 45 minutes. And if you have, you know, a bunch of those, that that's a lot. Do you remember Sports Story? <laughs> Unfortunately. <laughs> <laughs> sports stories uh gameplay was problematic but if it, imagine sports story if they did nothing else but just make half of the main quest optional that game might have been a little bit better so maybe it was a 10 hour game and it still stunk but maybe it was a 10 hour game and the yeah. rest of the stuff was like optional things you could do to get items and not just have to do it I, that would I, made it a lot better. And the sad part about sports stories, I actually remember a lot of the different worlds or areas you had to go to, and they were cool. They were unique, like the, the cave with the mine carts and stuff. But like, it wasn't fun doing the quests, right? But I think the design of the levels were were fun. Yeah, and that that's the sad part of it. But again, I don't want to get into that. Yeah, 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 yeah. All right, anyways, Russell Quest. We have a lot more to talk about. Next bullet here we have Mercury Steam announced that Metroid Dread has sold three million copies, making it the top selling Metroid Woo! game of all time Woo! that I still have not played and I won't play. But I appreciate the thought and all of you asking me to play it. It's not gonna happen. Tried the demo. It's not for me. Metroid is not for me. Look, Sorry, every, everybody. If it's not for you, it's not for you. Right. Let's let's all try it. Marty, Marty, Detective Pikachu returns. There are people that want to play that game, man. It, that Not everything is for everybody. The thing mm. that it's like a bittersweet piece of news. It's the top selling Metroid game of all time. It's only three million. Like, what I know, the that's, hell? That's, that's sad. It is sad. Like, I, it's just Metroid is one of the weirdest franchises. It's so famous. Everyone knows. It. I mean, Nintendo fans all know it. It just doesn't I mean, the sell Fallout well. Boys mentioned it, right? Didn't they mention it? it? Yeah, yeah. It's in Fallout Boy. They loved it. Um, but uh, yeah, and it, I is it the best game in the Metroid franchise? Uh, maybe not. I you know I liked Metroid Prime. I mean, I like Metroid um, Metroid Zero. Metroid Zero, yeah. Um, 
you know, uh, Fusion's good, you know, whatever. They're all good, but like Metroid Dread's really good. Mm. It should it should have sold five million. It you know it just seems crazy. It's so freaking good and it performs but, really but well. Here's the thing: it's beautiful. three million, like enough to say like we're gonna blow this franchise up and make this many more games. No, and I and I guarantee, I bet you, Metroid Prime Four might even beat that. So it's like. I th- I think it it's is how long it took to develop Metroid Dread. I don't know how long it took, but it's a 2D game, so it, it it's not going to take as long as a 3D game. I think we're going to see when Metroid Prime 4 comes out if that can have like a switch effect, then the franchise will continue in force. But if Metroid Prime 4 doesn't do well, mm. I don't know if they keep doing like 2D Metroid games if they think 3 That's million is enough. It just depends so- on how long it took to make. To go down a rabbit hole since we're on this topic, do you think Metroid 4, being the development time that they're having right now, is going to tackle like the missing link for online multiplayer games on a Nintendo system? Could this be the Call of Duty of Nintendo? Could it be the Halo of Nintendo? Could they be introducing this to make this a stabilized, more defined Splatoon? Like, is this what they're doing? Like, you think like. Like the hardcore, because like you would, you know, naturally I would say, well, Splatoon, but that's it's just not. Uh, this not is the hardcore. first person shooter. This is yeah. this is the Call of Duty. Be. It, it, I mean, it, it would make be. sense, right? And that's how you sell ten million copies of of a Metroid series, in my eyes, right? Because now you're going to get these people that maybe aren't really into Metroid, but they love that first person online shooter concept. Yeah. I can. Just, I mean, it's taken a long time, and I'd love to know why it's taking so long. I know they rebooted development, but that was like that was five still, years ago. Yeah, I agree. We still haven't seen. We've never seen any footage of this game. You can talk about the little teaser. That's just that. Yeah, that, that four count. was something. Uh, just a graphics person does. Not even someone who worked on the game. You could have like, done we've that. Never John. seen anything. I couldn't do it, but I know you we haven't seen point. anything of this game in five years. Not even like a teaser. Like mm. it's crazy. So, well, John, moving on for the next bullet, I'm going to let you read this bullet because I'm blaming you and not me. I fuck Hambone formal formal apology to Hambone about not playing his voicemail. You know what? I didn't even download his voicemail now. Maybe I should download it. I guess I don't know. So we had a cry more episode last (laughs) week about well, not last week, a couple weeks ago about switch hotties. Hambone was so kind enough to send us a voicemail about his top five switch hotties. And John didn't put it in. I'm pointing at you, John. I don't even, I don't remember it even coming across. I think uh, I saw it. I don't even know. I don't even know. Uh, I'm looking for it now. I'll, hey, I'll bring it up. It's, um, it. I will blame Spotify for podcasters, formerly Anchor. Uh, they make it really hard to just go download. Do uh, they? A, they do. Because you have to like. You have to like build it. Like I have to actually like I'm doing it now. I have to create a podcast and I have to say um, edit a podcast. And then it gives me five things I can record a library music. And then there's ad listener voicemail messages. But I can't just go to like some voicemail tab and and listen to it. I, I just can't. Um, I'm going to grab the last I, one here. Are you sure that's true? It's just it's tricky. I'm just I'm just saying user error. Okay, all right, I got it. Hold on, let me upload it here. We're doing this live, guys. I mean, we're I've just... already listened to it. You're gonna play this. I right? have not heard it. I you have not still it. haven't listened to it after. Who are you? I was on freaking vacation. <laughs> not when this came out. Right, Where is I got it, under? it? And I'm gonna play it live. Um, I don't know if it's loud enough. Let me make it a little louder. All right, let's play it now. What's up, fellas? It's Hambone Johnny. Hope you're both doing well. I uh, wanted to chime in with my top five uh, hot new characters from video games in 2023. Uh, so starting off, number five, uh, Professor Mirabelle Garlic from Hogwarts Legacy. Yes. Uh, John, I know you played that one. She is super hot. Uh, number four is Pura from Tears of the Kingdom. Uh, our list is the same. Uh, Number three, Jill from Final Fantasy 16. You know, more of a classic here, but um, classic. Yeah, loved her. And uh, there's a couple of little racy scenes throughout the game. You got a little back, you got a little side booby. You know, can't go wrong with that. Can't. Uh, Number two is Seika from Horizon Forbidden West Burning Shores DLC that dropped earlier this year. Uh, And number one, I mean, take your pick from any of the Fire Emblem Engage characters, but (laughs) my favorite personally has got to be Ivy. Thanks, yes. fellas. Talk to you soon. Bye now. There you See, go, Hambone. I, I knew played. you'd like that list too, John, because it was your types of games. Yes. 
three of them were on my list, right? We had Ivy, mm -hmm. we had Professor Garlic, we had Pura. Uh, Pura. Yeah, I think I put Pura number one, correct? You did. You did. Yeah. The Fire Emblem characters, there's so many. Would it was really Pura hard to be choose. as hot if she didn't have the glasses? I mean, but she has the glasses. But I'm, I'm just saying. I think it adds a, a, a portion of sexiness to her. It is the nerd. So I'm I'm like a dork. I've been a dork my whole life, right? Oh, you and said I just, it, not just me. remember when things this way. Remember when we were kids? You see it like you can take any girl, hot girl, whatever, and you, you put their hair in a ponytail and you give them a thick rim glasses and they're instantly hot, right? It's just it just works. It just, just works. Just so that's why Pura is hot because she is smart and she's like got these big glasses on and they cannot hold back the hotness that just erupts out of her. She's fantastic. And she came as a total surprise. I just did not expect it at all. It's lovely. I tried to look up Jill from Final Fantasy 16, but her her hotness does not exude in pictures. So I, when I eventually play, I'll, I'll have to see. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look right now. He's gonna look. He's gonna look. Oh, 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 oh. Um, but that's Chill. that's a good list. That's a that's a solid list. She looks like she's twelve. I mean, all Final Fantasy characters look like they're twelve. <laughs> okay, don't don't on. get us in trouble again, Drew. Don't get I, us in I, trouble. I, listen, I didn't say she was hot. I don't know who she is. <laughs> John, let's talk about extra life events because we are we're almost here. We're we're like we're so close. Speaking of twelve year olds. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know, John. I don't, I, sometimes words just come out of your mouth. Dads in Denver Live for Extra Life is happening August 19th. That's going to be this Saturday. This Saturday. 9 a.m. to 9 p.m. in this weird mountain time time zone. Whatever the fuck that is. I don't know. The best mountain times. Um, 9 to 9. You can't. You can't. 9 to 9. Be there. Be squared. Is what one might say. John, why don't you tell us a little bit about what's happening during those 12 hours? 12 hours of the four of us, me, nice. you, Hambone, and Kuzi, holding hands and playing games. What are we what's gonna happen? Uh it's gonna be 12 hours straight, one continuous stream. Uh it's gonna be fantastic. We're gonna play games, four player games, two player games, three player games, I don't know, solo games, uh, you know, when we need a break. I, we, we don't have a schedule, but we are not turning off that stream. There will always be a game going on. We're not taking any breaks. So maybe I'll just sit there and play through Life is Strange for you while the other three take a break. I don't know what's going to happen. It could get crazy. Um, but you can watch that stream. We're on twitch.tv slash dads after dark show. And we are raising money for a children's hospital in Aurora, Colorado. Uh, we are... Uh, you can donate through the Extra Life site. We are part of the Nintendo Dads team, and we're the first to go because we're going, whoa, September, uh, three months early because we wanted to get together, and we can't really do that in November. It's really hard during the holiday season, but it's a lot easier in August. We are going to be uh, taking um, any, do any donations you give before the stream starts. Remember that. Before the stream starts, that's Saturday. Um, you can pick one of the four dads, Drew, me, Hambone, or Coos. Uh, make that your designated pick. If you donate multiple times, you can pick multiple dads, by the way. Wow, smart. Um, so so your so if you donate twenty dollars, say you get twenty lottery balls. And if you pick Drew, and then Drew wins a four player game, and we're gonna have a bunch of them. We're gonna have a bunch of them during the stream, but they're only gonna be the four player games. And Drew wins, you mm. get another set of twenty lottery balls. And then wow. if Drew, they, if we play Mario Golf, my God, if we play Mario Golf and Drew wins Mario well, Golf. You certainly won't win Mario Golf. You're going to win 20 more Lotto Balls. You could win 200 more Lotto Balls. So pick the dad you think is going to win the most games. We're not going to tell you what games we're going to play, um, but there'll be a balance. Hmm. And, and if we fucking play Mario Golf, I want to win that so fucking bad. You've been practicing? No, not you at all. You probably have. Been. Yeah, no, I haven't. Um, but, uh, yeah, no, uh, if you donate before the event, you can pick a dad and you can get on there. Once and, the event starts, we're not doing that anymore. Well, so let, you're going to donate, clear, donate early and donate early hundred percent. Cause you get more balls and who doesn't like more balls, tons but, more balls, tons more balls. But you, if, if for whatever reason you miss that, you can still donate after and yeah. you still get, if you donate a hundred dollars, you still get a hundred balls. You just don't get the multipliers because it's already started. Right. Um, but we also, 
right, John? We you got to make sure you you tune into the live stream because there's going to be random prizes given out throughout the stream that you don't even have to donate to win. Yep. So yep. as long as you're watching us on stream, there's going to be games that you can part participate in there's going to be little contests that you're just going to have to maybe answer on the stream or or vote or or maybe even pick one of us live on, on a on a spur of the moment game um lots of some fun stuff that's going to happen throughout the stream so there's definitely reasons to, to watch us all day quite honestly we might just make shit up on the stream and just offer a prize right on the fly I, yeah, I, like, I don't think we don't really have plans for specific things during the stream. We're just going to give away mm. eShop prizes, whatever prizes as we go. So if you just watch the stream, you can win instant money. Um, so that'll be cool. And mm. then we said we are going to do the um, lotto drawings uh, Sunday morning. Correct. So uh, after the stream that that next morning, we're going to do um, do those. And then they're going to be announced on our next podcast, which will be that Monday correct that'll be fun so, too and so don't the, wait don't wait don't a wait. week or whatever like do it know. now you're so doing you it this, right away just do it now just go onto the link and donate and i'll tell you what i added a little caveat last week is if you donate and you leave a voicemail you gotta do both you can't just leave a voicemail you have to donate whether it's a dollar ten dollars a hundred dollars whatever if you donate and leave a voicemail before the stream mm. you'll get 10 free balls now what does that mean? It means you still get the multipliers because you're getting 10 free balls. So leave us a voicemail. It's 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 easy. It's free balls. It's free ball in it. Free balls. And it's free ball in it. Um, <laughs> but leave us a leave us a joke in a voicemail so we can listen to it and laugh and play it. Give us words of encouragement. Tell us why we suck. Tell us why you love us. Tell us anything. Just leave us a voicemail. Just chat. Just call to say you're driving to pick up pizza for the family. You want to say hi. That's okay. If you do a joke and you make Drew pee his pants, I will give 10 bonus bonus balls. Wow. I I'm calling that pee. right now. I might just pee on purpose so you can get the balls. It would be nice of you. That well, would be nice of you. Poozy, I don't want to pee on his furniture. Uh, yeah, we don't want to shit in his urinal. No, um, we we're going to have... We're going to have a lot of fun. Well, we've got some real great game ideas that'll be going on. It's This is going to be fun. And um, we'll have we'll have the camera on. We'll all be there. Uh, we're going to we're going to have a lot of fun and we're going to play several games that is going to involve you. So hang around, watch us participate with us. We're going to have a lot of fun. And yeah, if you want to donate, uh, you can donate to this to the uh, here's the URL. It's bit.ly. That's bit.ly slash dads in Denver live. That is bit.ly slash dads in Denver live. Uh, previously there was hyphens in there. Um, there's a second link that doesn't have hyphens. I think it's just a lot easier. Yeah. I heard Tim reading it off and I was like, what have I done? Like, this is bad. So dad's in Denver live. I thought, I thought that same thing. John, we're up to $560 donated already, Woohoo! which is freaking crazy. Thank you. Uh, Mm. We're not as famous as the Nintendo dads. Um, and even though we're raising it for the same team, um, I didn't know you know what we'd come in at yeah um, we kept our goals low our, go- our goal was 250 we hit that um, we set a second milestone of 500 we have four now um our goal is a thousand dollars and we're we're already coming up on our third milestone so it's freaking crazy and several of you who you know who've donated um have picked your team and i'm looking at this mm. um we need to boost up kuz's team the only person on Kuz's team is his sister. I mean, I think I only have we all. What be this? Yeah, yeah. We got we we got to we got to boost him up. But right now, Hambone, Hambone. I mean, he's the smart choice. Let's be honest. Is leading the pack almost doubled. Um, crazy. The money is on Hambone, so we got to beat this shit out of Hambone. We, you know, we might have to collude at this point, Drew. We might have to collude to ruin him. Mm. Um, I'm re- I'm prepared to do that. I think anything is possible in here. I agree. You know, uh, I want to say one more thing too. Mm-hmm. You should really just think about this, right? John mentioned about the Nintendo dads and how we're part of their team, right? Mm-hmm. Which means two things. If you donate to us, you get a chance to win all the amazing prizes that we just listed in Discord. We have 20 prizes that we're giving away with an additional like eight streams. So we're giving away almost 30 prizes. You are eligible for all of those prizes, but by donating through us through Nintendo Dads, you're also eligible for all of the Nintendo Dad prizes that they're doing. But if you donate just to Nintendo Dads, John, 
You don't get our prizes. <laughs> oh, wow. I'm just saying. You might as well double dip. You can win twice, three times. Double you know? dip. Double dip. Yeah. Come through us. No, it sounds good. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. I like I like that we're gambling on each other. It's like horse racing. It is. You know, it's going to be races, a good time. Yeah. Horses have big dits. Um, but yeah. Tune in. I can't wait. I can't wait for it, honestly. You too. All right. Okay. That's the meat. We're all done. Let's jump into what we've been playing, Drew. And and by the way, I'm just not doing bumpers this week. I we we got to resolve our bumper situation. I'm the bumper now. So we are just going. There's no breaks here. Drew is like wow. dying over there. He's like, what's going on? Sure. Drew, this has been a weird week. It has been weird. We haven't really chatted about what we've been playing. Uh, you've mm-hmm. been home. I've been on the road. I've got road games. Um, I will start out. I've been playing Diablo four. Um, I only played it for like, you know, a few days this week. Uh, um, I am enjoying Diablo four. I recognize Diablo four for what Diablo is, which is a, um, it's, it's not a fun game. I don't think I've ever really enjoyed Diablo as a game. What I enjoy it as is like a looting, a looting good time. And Diablo 4 is better than Diablo 3 because it presents you with an open world. It's one big continuous world and you can find these side quests and you can find treasure chests. And it's just it's one big world. You're not just warping around. It's very enjoyable. And so at any given time, I have a bunch of side quests I got to do, a bunch of main quests I got to do. And I'm like, oh, I'm going to I'm going to dip into some side quests, do some things, kill some enemies, whatever. And then you finish the quest and you get, you know, like that. It's just a a tick the box pleasure simulator. That's what Diablo 4 is. I don't think it should be like a game of the year candidate or anything, but it's very enjoyable. I've been playing the season. And in the season, there are these like season rewards, just like these other battle pass games. And you can earn, you know, uh, cosmetics and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And the way they do it is interesting. If you don't pay for the battle, the season pass, Right. And you get a season pass. You have to buy a season pass for every season. Um, You can earn items. um, But you can't claim many of them. You can't claim them if you don't have the the season pass. Really? They they actually let you claim a few. So even if you don't pay for it, you can still claim things. So it's worth it to play the season, even if you don't pay. So you can claim some things. So you have it like like if it was like six months later that you could then get them if you. I don't point? know. No, I don't know if six months later, but if any point in this season I do buy the pass, I can instantly claim all the things that I've gotcha. already earned. So that's cool. And it makes me at least think about it. Here's the rub. I looked up today how much a uh, season pass is. It is $10 for the regular pass. I mean, I fucking hate this about modern games. They don't even have, I mean, it's a, you have to buy a pass, which is silly because you didn't do that in Diablo 3. Or maybe you did. I don't know. If, I don't no, know no, that, the, there yeah, was no payments at all. Right. But now now there's two different kinds of battle passes you can oh, have. There's geez. a premium one and a regular one. And then there's the free one, which is like they include that there. But for $10, you get a battle pass. But for $25, you get the premium battle oh, pass. How long is their, their seasons? Uh, I think every three months or four months. I think it's three months and then there's like a break. Yeah. And then there'll be another one. What pisses me off about that is it's 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 what games are starting to do. And I talked about it a little bit before, but it's what games are starting to do these days. And I fucking hate it, which is even if you pay uh, $10 for the battle pass, you feel like you're missing out on something because you didn't pay 25. Mm. Even if you paid $60 for the game, you feel like you're missing out because you didn't get the digital deluxe version for 80. Even if you buy the $80 digital deluxe version of the game, you're missing out because the $100 version of the game came out five days earlier. You are you are taking your, your c- customers that are paying you money for a game, $60, $70, $80, and you are still making them feel like they're missing something. It's a nasty, dirty feeling. And... I'm okay with the battle pass being the battle pass. Why can't it just be a $10 battle pass? Why does there got to be a $25? Why not go to $50? It's it's silly and ridiculous. And it makes me not want to buy any battle pass because even if I spend that $10, I'm not, I'm missing out on things with the 25. The, you, the thing with these games are you got to be all in or you're not in at all. Exactly. Like it, it, it's, it's just, it's unfortunate, but 
you need to be playing Diablo 4 and only Diablo 4. And then it might life. be worth your $25. Yes, you're, but you're going to commit to it. Right? You're going to commit that you're going to play 20 hours a week or else yeah. it's not worth it. Well, they said um, you can get through <coughs> they, you can get through a season's content in about 80 hours. So and which is fine. A season lasts three months. You don't have to play it right away. Yeah. yeah but yeah. like that's and then what the next season you got to do it again and again and again. And if you like it, you like it. I wanted to look and see if you could earn a battle pass like the way fire uh, fire emblem, the way Fortnite does it. So if like you get through the entire season, you you get a battle pass for the next season. Check this out. No, <laughs> but but I, but if I want to buy a battle pass, I can't just pay ten dollars for it. No, I have to buy platinum coins. So you have to buy platinum coins and then you use those coins to buy oh. the battle pass. And uh, the way they do it is, well, if I pay, if I pay ten dollars, I can get a thousand platinum coins and a thousand platinum coins is what the battle pass costs. But if I pay a hundred dollars, you would think, OK, that will get you ten thousand uh, ten thousand platinum coins. No, it gives me eleven thousand five hundred. So if you buy more in bulk they're a little bit cheaper not much but a little bit cheaper okay whatever you can also earn platinum coins in the season so that's cool now you can earn that currency and use that to pay for the battle pass but no you cannot earn enough coins to buy it the next season's <sighs> battle pass so there's no way to actually earn the battle pass for the next season but you can earn platinum coins towards it i think you lost me john i i, I I'm not it's gonna so lie here. Fucking stupid. Yeah, still... <laughs> like, I hate the way these games will do it. They all feel like mobile games. So mm. now I want to decide: should I, should I buy? I wouldn't buy the premium battle pass. Fuck twenty five dollars. I'm not. I'm not hardcore here. But do I buy the ten dollar pass and for every season and enjoy the game a little bit more that way? But then I don't know because I don't know if I'm going to play this game mm. for season two Just or three. Wait I think till it I comes will. to Switch and then I'll play with you. <laughs> and this game ain't coming to Switch. Sorry, Switch two um but it's a, it's a good game i'm enjoying it i'm in the, and towards the end of act three um my friend has went so far ahead of me now i'm not even sure if he wants to play with me anymore uh, but i'm going to try to finish up the main campaign and i'll see about finishing up the season and then i'll probably decide if i i'll probably decide when i finish the season if i want to just pay for a ten dollar battle pass and just do that every season but it just sucks that they make it so you feel like you're still missing out on mm -hmm. shit. I fucking hate that. Um, that's fucking Diablo four. Is it a good game? Yes. Um, I have heard that there are some mechanical problems when you get towards the end of the game. Um, I'm not there yet. I'm very mm. casual. So um, is it a good game. Should it be game of the year? No, it should not be a game of the year. Can't do it. Hmm. What have you been playing? Um, Disney's illusion Island kind of uh, still playing as a family. It's just I, I have the same opinion as I had last time. It's just it's not I don't think it's nearly as good as people say. I, I don't I don't see it. I mean, I still yeah. think that the writing of it's kind of funny and fun, but the no combat, just a straight platformer is just it gets old fast in my eyes. Uh, I don't know. It's just I, I you have to find like three three tombs like i found one i think i'm like close to getting the second one so i don't know maybe i'm halfway through the game i, I don't know but i don't know it's just it's a nothing burger yeah mm. you um on our last show you had some qualms but you sounded like you were enjoying it and then pretty soon after that show you were yeah. like yeah this game is not good I thought um, it was so, going to develop more, like you get like mm -hmm. items or weapons and there'd be more enemies. I thought like what I played was like more like the tutorial area and it's, it wasn't. It was just, just not really. I mean, you learn new mechanics like you do in Ori and stuff like a double jump or ground pound or whatever. But right. it's not it's not enough to make the, the game play exciting. Yeah, because in Ori, you have to frantically kill enemies and, and jump through hoops. And yeah, there's nothing. So of that. this is weird. When I was at the world store, they have, um, you know, the TV where they do like the Nintendo Direct. Yeah, right. they had Disney's Illusion Island up there and they had two Joy-Cons in the middle of the room. And it was just on a huge TV. And we got a chance to play. And I was like, OK, cool. I haven't played it. And uh, I was playing it with Michelle. And yeah we we're going around i was goofy she was mini it was just in the middle i don't know how the demo worked it was like in the middle of the game or whatever yep. so we weren't you know and yeah i got kind of bored 
and I, like that could just be because I didn't know what I was doing. But we were like trying to like go somewhere, and I couldn't tell which direction we had you to can't. go. I you have to there, there's if you pause it, there's the map you can zoom in and out and stuff. But like I just oh. feel like I'm constantly pausing it to look at the map. They, they they need to do a better job of doing like an overlay map where like it's like transparent and you can still maybe move around. It's like you can turn it on and off with it a button. But to pause it and go back and forth and pause it and pause it. And when you're playing with, with other players, you're pausing it and they're mid jump. And it's just, uh, I don't know. It's just, yeah. it's annoying. It's just, it's not. The game is Ori polished. Was like that. It's just, Ori it's was just like not that. Fun. I, yeah, yeah. I remember when playing Ori, I, I used to pause it a lot to look at the map and I kind of hated that. But I don't, you know, you're right. With multiple players, people are trying to do something and you're looking at yeah. the map and they're fucking annoyed at you. Yeah. Agreed. Yeah. So. I don't know. I, I, I mean, I, I want to say we'll finish it, but like, even my kids aren't like, let's, let's play Disney's Illusion Island or let's, no, they'd rather play, you know, fucking Barbie's dollhouse on the iPad. I don't know what, whatever they do. <laughs> so that's all. I've been playing that one a little bit, but a little bet to you. Okay. Um, I finally played Bayonetta Origins. So oh, complete it. The Lost Demon. I started it before I left. I finished it. Yep. Um, it was good. It, it was a game that usually I would try like one of those games where you try to like complete everything and do everything I found. I mean, story wise, it has a cute little story. And what I love about it is it really goes through Bayonetta's origin story, which is talked about a lot in the Bayonetta game and the Bayonetta two game. But for some reason, it really sticks more here. It's just more simple. They explain the fact her name is Cereza. It's not Bayonetta. Bayonetta is more of a title. And uh, yeah, they talk about how, you know, her friend uh, Jean and they talk about her, her mother and father and who they were. And it's done in like a storybook format. There's like a narrator. It's the narrator from the Bayonetta games. And it's done really well. Um, I, I, I really enjoyed the story and, and, and all of that. The art style is fantastic. It's like watercolor. Um, it looks great. And the voice acting is really good. Um, it's voice acted by a, like a kid, a younger kid or someone who sounds like a younger kid. Uh, we don't have to get into the, the voice acting um, controversy anymore. And um, yeah, it's 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 good. I, I will say the combat gets a little bit old. Um, you use the left stick to move Bayonetta and you use the right stick to control your your demon, who is um, looks like your 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 little um, stuffy Cheshire. And it. It's one of those games. It's very Star Fox Zero in that I enjoyed both of those games. But even by the end of it, I wasn't really good at controlling it. Um, because if you ever play the game Brothers, it's a similar style. You have two brothers you control with the two sticks. But there's only like one action button in that game. This game has it starts giving you controls. OK, hold hold ZL with Bayonetta to use thorns. And then it's like. Now do this and you can you can press L and and they keep adding to it. And then you have a skill tree that adds more and more. And it's like, whoa, there is all of these controls that are happening. And you have to do the right stick and the left stick separately. I remember asking uh, Justin on Nintendo Dads when he was playing this game, can you share the Joy-Cons out and have people control one character? Mm -hmm. And you totally can do that. But you'd have to communicate verbally like, OK, I'm going to go here. Go get the guy with the thorns and whatever. Um, it would be fun to do. If I ever played the game again, I would grab one of my kids and see if they'd want to play with me and just split the Joy-Cons out. Um, but yeah, the combat does get a little button mashy and constantly had situations where Bayonetta is running off into a corner because I was focused on Cheshire um, all the way to the end. Uh, I just never had a full grasp of the controls. It was it was pretty tough. And also it's one of those games where you amass items as you go through the game and you just never use them. I, I, the only items I used were the health items um, some of the other items just do various things for Cheshire and all that. You don't even need them. I mean, I just used health items. I mean, I'm sure the other items might have helped along the way. I didn't even know what they did for most of the game. Um, but no, I I I quite enjoyed it. Um, it was good. I I think it's like the second best Bayonetta game now behind Bayonetta. Wow. 2. Um, but yeah, it's it 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 really tells that origin story really well. And I'll be curious to see if they make like a sequel to this one. Um, but yeah, no, I, I enjoyed it. It was good. And, uh, and I rolled credits and then I was kind of done navigating the world around the world's really slow. So it was a game that I just didn't want to, um, go and try to a hundred percent. It was just, yeah, that uh, made sense. Those games. So that's it. Nice. What else have you been playing? 
I've been playing Pikmin 4, John, the first Pikmin experience. I've been playing this entire game in co-op mode. Um, I will say, so the co-op mode is, is like I With mentioned. With Angie, right? Correct. Yeah, yeah. It's it's literally like the old school Galaxy, uh, Mario Galaxy, where you literally just have a cursor on the screen that you move around with your joystick and you can throw rots at bad guys, you can throw bombs, you can throw carrots, you can throw different items. Um, it's a lifesaver, I will say. You know, playing solo, I could... I, I mean, playing co-op, I, I actually truly think it makes you progress through the game quicker. I don't want to say cheat because it's obviously not cheating, but it makes the game a little bit easier where she can legit kill bosses why I just stand off the side of the screen if I wanted to. Um, but yeah, I wrote, we rolled credits. We rolled credits on this game. Um, there's a lot to play. This isn't a spoiler. I'm hoping this, there's a lot to play after you roll credits. That That's that's all i'm going to say about it but the, it's not <laughs> just over there's a lot we we we're about 20 hours in so far um i think i'm close to like 100% and so as you know probably in the past pitman games we only move on to the next level once we 100% it so we don't yeah. just keep the level and move on we 100% that level and then we move on to the next one i don't um, love that strategy for you i i do that strategy in a lot of games though uh i think it's I, faulty i'm a strong believer in when you roll credits and not this game but most games for example like uh tears of the kingdom stuff i don't know why i just naturally when i roll credits i think that i'm done playing that game i it's just i'd rather do everything i can before i beat it i yeah but the the problem is level by level because often you get power up items and stuff that make getting the extra things way easier so if you just try to do it too too. much early on you might be just wasting your time like if you think about ori right trying to 100 percent the game if you do that at the end when you can go around the world so quickly you're gonna have a much easier time than if you try to struggle and do that early on that's all Uh, every game is different it's a a fair point Uh, i think like you said i think each game or like not pitman but i think depends on the game right if that's true or not um, I will say, again, I'm going to try to keep all this high level. I don't want to spoil things. The diversity of the levels to me, um, I, well, I just, I was ups- I That was one of the biggest downfalls for this game for me is a lot of the levels did feel very similar, right? And, and for those that played the game know exactly what I'm talking about. There was this one level that stuck out that was very different than the other ones, which was awesome and cool. I just wish there was more of them. Right. I just felt like they were all kind of the same design, just a little different. Um, mm-hmm. And again, I know you're going to play this game eventually. Um, you'll you'll understand what I mean. But overall, I mean, my first experience with Pikmin, I, I still am a huge fan of I think yellow Pikmin are some of my favorite. Um, I think those are carryovers from the previous games, right? The lightning Pikmin, right? They're lightning. They dig faster and you can throw them higher. Oh, so, yeah, that's right. Yep. yep. Um. So yeah, uh, th- those guys are my favorites. The purple ones are cool. I don't know if the purple ones are new or not. They they count as one Pikmin, which was like the strength of ten Pikmin. They are not new. The original game had red, yellow, blue. Um, purple came. I think purple came in two, but then went away. I want to think. Okay. I think they went away in three, but like I, I'm bad at remembering. Yeah, them, yeah. But I, I think they had gone away for some reason. Purple ones are cool. The little yeah. chubby guys, and then um, I like the rock guys, the black ones. The are, rock are ones are one? fun. Yep. It's so uh, shiny. I like I was. Yeah, like, I do like that. I like the how they look. And then there's pink ones as well, which fly, which are the flying cool. ones. Yep. Yep. And then there, there's a lot of other ones too. I don't have the all of them, but yeah, I okay. really like the uh, the yellow ones and the purple ones are fun. Yeah, I, I mean, overall. I really enjoyed this game. I could see myself going back, but maybe be disappointed because I probably played the best. I played the all star <laughs> version. Um, but yeah, I, I'm having a blast with it. We're gonna continue it until it says you've hundred percent of it. But I think I think we're getting there. I think we're getting close. Sweet. So yep. Michelle, so Michelle rolled credits on I've been waiting to play Pikmin 4. Mm-hmm. She's still playing it. She rolled credits while we were driving home. Okay uh not driving home driving to new york and i was like oh cool maybe i can play pikmin 4 when we get there because i rolled credits on bayonetta origins right yeah. right before her and then she goes i'm done and and then i i texted dylan and i said uh she's done like she rolled credits no i don't know if i texted dylan i don't know and but it was funny because i knew that there was stuff after the credits and there's I was a like, lot oh, is she gonna do i don't and i didn't know what it was so i was just like all right, yeah, cool, but she, she, let's see what happens. And then, and then, at, like a little later, she goes, "Well, I'm not done." <laughs> so, it, it, it's 
it's weird that they roll the credits in a very weird spot. Like uh-huh. I honestly feel like it's only fifty percent of the game, and I and I, I stand strong with. It. I think it's only fifty percent of it, but there's still like pivotal story parts of the of the story of the game that come after you roll credits. So I, I, yeah. it's a little confusing on why you roll credits. So early. it reminded me of uh, Dragon Quest Eleven. Remember we rolled credits. Oh and yes. It's like I mean do not stop playing dragon quest 11 when you first get credits that's insanity um same thing with monster hunter rise we see a lot of these games they just roll credits early and then there's second set of credits but it also reminded me of mario odyssey where i said like if you stop playing mario odyssey when credits rolled you missed Mm -hmm. out on like 75 percent of the game it was like Mm -hmm. insane i don't know why nintendo decided to do that with pikmin 4 but like when i play it i'll figure it out yeah um, maybe they just want it to be like, they didn't want it to be super challenging. Um, they wanted, you know, younger players to be able to complete the game and possibly stop. Um, you know, maybe they wanted you to see the people who made the game early. I have no idea. Um, but I'm really curious. I think she's getting close to being done too. I don't know when I'll be able to play it. Nice. Um, but I'm excited too. Uh, when I finished Bayonetta origins, I was trying to figure out what to play. And I decided to go to my backlog and I went back to the Lara Croft Chronicles, uh, a game oh, yes. I reviewed for Nintendo Dads. And I played through the Guardian of Light. That's one of the two games on there. I forget what the other one's called. Is it's that the one, one the... you had already started? This is the one that I played on my on the gotcha. on, um, the first look. And I play I started all over again. And it's actually the third time I started all over again. Mm, sounds about right. It sounds about right. Uh, and played through the Guardian of Light. It. It's one of those games that deteriorates over time. I'll say it. Oh, like man. It's um, it's not a bad game. What I found was uh, when, I, when I played that first level on the stream, you can hear me saying, oh, it's got all these like little achievements you can come back and do. And it unlocks costumes and weapons and stuff like that. I want to unlock it all. Like that was my feeling. This mm. is one of those games where. You know, maybe you don't try to do it right away. This was another game where you wouldn't want to try to unlock everything right away because by the end you get a lot more health, a lot more ammo. Sure. Um, but I was excited for it. What I figured out was on the first level, uh, one of the achievements was beat the whole level in six minutes. And then another one was beat this one little mini boss in 30 seconds. Okay. I could never do it. I was speed running that thing over and over and over again. I could not beat the game in beat the level, the first level in six minutes. Uh, Meanwhile, they kept redoing the tutorial. It was driving me crazy. If you can't beat the time, the time challenge on the first level of the game after you finish the entire game, I wonder what's wrong with that. (laughs) You know what I mean? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Like, is the six minutes just unfair? Like, what the heck? It was bizarro. So by the time I finished the game, I, I really didn't go back to try to do any more achievements that I didn't do while I was playing. And that's a shame. I really wanted to go back and kind of try to beat everything. But that first level um, was was linear and quick, and I couldn't do the six minutes. There are levels that are much more open where you go in different directions. and You have to search for things. And they had like time limits. And it's like, oh, my God. You know, I'm I'm just going to say it. Time time limits or a clock in any video game should should not be allowed. Yep. I don't understand a developer that wants them that wants the consumer to play their game in a <laughs> unless they're trying to hide something like but why wouldn't you want you, like the, the the player to enjoy and see the game at their pace why force th- them through it in a time limit i think you you don't have to beat to beat the level you don't have to do it within Correct. the time limit. but still but the extra challenge of it yeah you don't have to do it i see it as Slime. like oh if you're a better player and you want to do this then go for it one problem i had was those achievements weren't just like boxes you check they gave you items. So Ooh, my list of guns cool. and my list I of, like that. Yeah, but my list of guns and list of costumes is woefully not populated because it's locked behind these really overly Objectives. difficult challenges. Yeah. I, I sound like I'm whining because it was too hard. And it was certainly was pretty hard, but I just feel like the challenges were so quickly very difficult i know exactly how to beat this freaking mini boss and i tried 10 times and i couldn't beat it in 30 seconds and then once you beat the thing 
and you don't know how long it's taken you if you don't get it it's not a plot you you have to start the level over again but there's not even a plot that tells you there is not a cl- there is a clock if you hit the pause button you can see your total time for the level but you don't see the time for the boss because it's not i gotcha you can deduce it if you pause it right away and then but but like you're no, not gonna I check know. it you need to keep a flow and then yeah once you beat the boss and you're like oh did i do it it's like oh okay well now i have to do the whole level again it's just not designed like if they let yeah. you just fight the boss in one shot and then repeat and retry and retry yeah it'll make it more fun so the achievements were great in their idea and like you know but they weren't great in their execution Hmm. So I'm just not excited. It doesn't open up the possibility that maybe in the future I play through the game again and I try to do it, but they were just sure. so annoying. Um, yeah, so that was a disappointment. And yeah, as the levels went, literally you finish a level and it's like, oh, you finish the level. There's no fanfare. They show you what you did. And then the next screen is the next level and here are the achievements. And then off you go. And you're like, you're so exhausted. It's like, I need a good story sequence mm-hmm. or... I need a smaller mini game or give me a little break in between. Yeah, that's fair. So I don't I'm not interested right now in playing the second game. Maybe in the future they might have maybe improved on some things. But um, yeah, by the end of it, I was like really cheap deaths. Um, they throw a lot at you and you have a it's like an isometric view. So it's kind of tricky to go through. I did enjoy the game, but it could have been a lot better. Um, it's a 10 year old game. So, you know, it's hard to be like too mean to it, but. Um, I did enjoy it, um, but yeah. Nice. Yeah. Um, I've been playing Legend of Zelda Oracles of Seasons, John. Uh, I don't know. You have never played these games. Uh, this game's fantastic. Uh, it has all of this awesome music that's kind of retro, but remixed up a little bit. Um, mm-hmm. Some of the, some solid different tracks from different Zelda other games that we've played. Um, I've seen actually a lot of things that now I understand maybe this might have been the roots of where they came from that you can now see in some other Zelda games. Mm-hmm. Uh, it has that very Link's Awakening type feel with just like, that doesn't belong in a Zelda game. Mm-hmm. Or like just fun things like that. Um, the idea of getting this rod that can change the seasons and that you have to go to like this underworld almost like a dark world in um in uh links um link to the past right where you go to like the dark world you have to try to go to this dark world and you slowly unlock different things to upgrade your 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 wand right so you have this wand that doesn't have any powers yet and then you get the power of making it winter and then you add, you add up all the seasons so super clever and super clever of now how back in the red of the world like one area you know, by making it winter now, you can cross the ice, right? Or by making it summer now, it grew a vine. So now you can climb up the vine to these new areas. It's it's actually very cool, very genius move. And, you know, having an absolute blast playing this game. Uh, there's that side quest and story side quest and, you know, the, the trade and sequences that those Zelda games love to have. There's this concept of these companions, which I thought was pretty cool, where you get this horn and you can blow the horn and you can get like um, there's this kind of rude guy that has bots and gloves and can hop. So you can hop on his back and you get to ride him. You can do this flying bear and you get to drop on the bear. I went with um, what do they call the um, what's his name? The guy that you have to kill with like the bombs and he looks like a like tingle. A, no, not Tingle. He looks, he's like the dinosaur <laughs> guy. He looks like the Triceratops. Yeah, like the rhino guy. Yeah. It, it, these are the D. I forget what they call them. So it, I chose him. You have to choose which one you want. So every time I call him, I can jump on his back. He can eat certain flowers. He can swim in the water. And it's like this cool little companion thing. Um, and then, of course, I always love seeing the different types of items and weapons that maybe never get carried over into other Zelda games that make it unique. But uh, it looks fun. I mean, it looks fantastic. The, the music's great. Uh, now I know Jesse's been complaining a little bit about uh, how to, where to go, and what to do, and I and I'll agree. There's some tricky parts that I I looked up, and I'll save that for later on because I have a question about strategy guides and and things along that nature. But um, overall, it's it's fun. It's a unique world. It's a different type of world, but it, it's that fun old school Zelda Classic that you've Zelda, gone to love. Yeah. yeah. Now you said you haven't played these. I haven't. I would like to, but I had the same problem with Jesse, which is 
like Jesse, this is an older game and Jesse doesn't want to like sit there and explore and whatever. Yeah. He wants to just go through it and see it. And I'm mm. the same way. So it's like, if I get lost in tears of the kingdom, great. I'm going to get, I'm going to get lost Agreed. and find things and whatever. It's a modern game, but yeah, in Oracle of Seasons, if I get lost, I'm just going to get frustrated. So I'm, True. I'm, I'm and, nervous and I have to that try exact it. Example, we'll talk about later. But I guess my question is: so Oracles of Ages, is it a completely different world and different game, or is it more like an overlay where it's almost the same game but there's a few differences? I don't know, but they, I mean, it's got different dungeons and stuff like that. So it's, it's yeah, but I don't want different. it to just be the same world and then the dungeons are different and different themed. Because if that's the case, I'm probably out. To be honest, you know what I mean? Like if, but if it's a whole different game, then I'm yeah, in. I mean, that wouldn't be bad, though, if it's the same overworld and give you a little leg up on at least getting around quickly. Yeah, that's I know what you mean. Point. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. I'm curious. So I, I, I will eventually play Orders of Ages. I might not just hop into it as soon as I beat this. I'm currently on the fifth dungeon. Like I said, I now have my rod upgraded to all four seasons. I don't know if it's the typical eight dungeons or not, um, but I'm enjoying it. It's a fun time. That's all cool. the games I've been playing. Cool. Um, yeah, my last game, I'm not going to get into too much, but I I, re, I replayed Oxenfree. It's uh, not a long game, but the sequel came out. I think it's 20 bucks. It came out a few weeks ago. And it's just been so long since I played Oxenfree. I was like, let me replay Oxenfree so I can get a feel for the second game. And I did play through it a game again. And uh, I don't think I'm going to play Oxenfree 2 now. I did... I was hyped up for Oxenfree 2 when they announced it. I realized Oxenfree, I think, was the first narrative game I ever played. And when I played it at the time, I was like, kind of like weirded out. I was like, wow, it's like just I'm using dialogue and and I'm affecting what my friends think of me. And I really enjoyed it. And it's like four hours. It's not a long game. But since then, I've played Life is Strange and all the Life is Strange games. And I've played Tell Me Why and The Quarry and Twin Mirror. And I've played all of these best of the best narrative games. And so now I played Oxen Free again. And I'm like, nah, I, you know, it doesn't have the same effect on me anymore. So hmm. um, I'm going to pass on Oxen Free too. But um, wow. yeah, Oxen Free is still a good game. Um, but I'm just not, I don't want to play too. So that's fair. That's it. I don't know what I'm going to play this week. I did start uh, the Great Ace Attorney Chronicles, the second game. Okay. Um, I'm doing the second case in that one. So the seventh case overall. Yeah, I'll play through that case and then I'll I'll put it down for another little while. Um, And then maybe by then I'll play Pikmin 4 or something like that. I I, I need a game myself. I just thought the Hambone 2 and see what our our plane. Red Dead Redemption. (sighs) I don't know. Ah, it's coming out to oh man if they drop the price on it i might play it you fool all I right cannot, let's move on. i cannot i cannot pay 50 dollars. i can't i have i i i said my piece on it all right so since you have let's, no bumpers john let's move on to what you think what do you think it's great to what do you think well i'm gonna right, why don't you, why don't you kick week. us off i haven't really read through many of you know these what? just let them pay. questions let them pay. okay um but this one actually comes from you, and you asked, should Nintendo stores be in all major cities, or is New York exclusivity part of the charm? Okay, I'm not going to look at the document here because I haven't looked through a lot of these, so I'm mm. going to let you surprise me with all of them. So it, it's a great question, did. right? It's yep. it's. I've been there a couple times. I mean, I don't really go to New York City anymore, especially since the kids, because it's like bringing young kids to the city, as you know, is probably not the best thing. It's, it's exhausting. Not much, it's it, brutally, especially in the summer. It's Ugh. brutal. You know, me and my wife used to go a few times in like Christmas time. Rockefeller yeah. it was nice. It was fun. You walked around, you had hot chocolate off the street. But again, that was like young. You're in your 20s, no kids. It's it's a thing to do. Yep. Um, but part of my experience was always like, yes, we did the Nintendo store. Like, like you just went. I'm going to spend $400 because I never go. Um, but you're right. If, if there was one, let's say, within an hour from my house, like how often would I be going? And how often would I just go and spend all that money? Is it and, is it nice? You know, e, e, I, yeah. Me, I mean, what if it was this. like twenty minutes from your house? I don't like. Yeah, would I go there to buy my game? Like, if a new game came out, is that where I would go and pick up like a like a plushie no, that came with? They, yeah, they I, don't I, have a redemption program like Best Buy and, exactly. <laughs> and Amazon and all them do. I, um, let me ask you a question this way: I hmm. do think it would be smart to put one in like somewhere in California, LA type area of some mm-hmm. sort. And even like Orlando, right, where 
they have this Universal Studios and fly, and the foot traffic that comes in and out of the Orlando airport. Like, I think it would be worthwhile to put one in like Florida and California. That's just my take. Um, but not every yeah. city. I, I do appreciate that there is only one it's a special place. If you're a New Yorker, you can go all the time. If you're not, you might not ever be able to get there. So I, I, I think it makes it more special. But I also wish that maybe there is a few more. Um, maybe put one in Denver. Uh, um, yeah, it is. It is tricky. There is one and that's it. I think they're they're putting one in Japan now, too, I think. Yeah. But yeah, it's a really great store. Plus, you have them in the parks and it's not the same thing, but you can get some cool merchandise there, too. And don't get me wrong. It is a great store. But at the end of the day, like I would get four hours, three and a half. I would never go to New York just for that. Like it's it's not enough. It's not huge. Oh, no. It could be so much more, Huge I guess, is my point. We don't go to New York for the Nintendo World no, Store. of but course. When, That's when not we, why when you we went decide, there. Yeah, when we decide we're going to New York, the first thing we, day, we say is, okay, first of all, we're going to go to the World Store. Yeah. Like, we always go to the same place in New York City because we have to go to the World Store. We're not going to skip that. So we of have to. Um, it's fantastic. It is. Fantastic. All right. Next question, John. I was thinking about this the other day. What will happen first on planet Earth? Will aliens arrive or will time travel be discovered and will we still be alive to see either one of them um definitely aliens because i don't i don't think time travel is possible That's okay fair. and if you think about it if easy time travel were possible if you could just get a machine and go back in time society would break down because somebody would go Man. back in time and then invent the time machine or you know nobody would want to invent anything because somebody would go back in time and then invented before them so it would sort of break society so it's probably better that there is no time travel going backwards sure um, still fascinated with interstellar and going forwards in time interesting um and i think there's just way more chance just occam's razor is just way more chance that aliens exist than time travel will we be alive for the first i mean there's all these theories out there the <laughs> government's hiding shit in these fake videos and whatnot but will we be alive to truly witness an alien on our planet possibly i hope not aliens scare the bejesus out of they me. are scary i don't like the way they're um shown uh so i hope i hope i'm dead and gone when aliens uh, unless aliens come in five years, I don't want to be dead and gone in five years. But you know what I mean? Like, I, I, yeah. hope I, I live to a I ripe old it. age and never see an alien. <laughs> OK. Over 125 million switches have been sold, John. Would you compare this number to top selling consoles of all time? Is this misleading? Right. Think about this for a second. Right? It's always misleading. It's very misleading, right? When you look back at some of the other major, you know, PlayStation console sold, the Switch has these boosts, right? When it comes to like variants, right? When it comes to different colors or different models, mm -hmm. you know, there's multiples, multiple Switches in a house, mm -hmm. households, right? You didn't have three PlayStations in a house. You just, you just didn't. You just, right. there's no need. Uh, but Switch, there is a need, right? So when people say Switch is one of the best-selling consoles of all time, 125 million, is that a very misleading stat? Yes. I mean, it's a, it's a fact. Don't get me wrong. It's it's an actual fact, right? But it's very misleading. It's a fact. It's misleading. I think all the hardware sales numbers are always misleading. And here's why. Um, the top two, I think, the, is the top one the DS? Um, I know, but I know about all the, the versions of it, right? I think above the switch is the PS2 and the Nintendo DS, right? The, the, the PS2 is the most ridiculously inflated number because younger people don't realize that the PS2 was a, a DVD player. True. People were buying PS2s. I, th I think at the time, I swear to you, I remember it DVD wasn't much players more. were more expensive than a PS2. So if you just wanted a DVD player, you just went and bought a PS2. The other Great. part is that the lasers would go out and people would just go and buy another PS2. So there's there's tons of yeah. PS2s that got bought over and over. Nintendo DS and then the Switches. Yeah, started. there were multiple PS2s in households that they didn't people wouldn't even buy games. They just were were 
getting DVDs. The DS is exaggerated for just what you said. There's differently themed DSs. But then the DS included the DS and the DSi and all the different models that kept coming. So, or is it 3DS? I, I don't know which one it is, but you have all these different models and extensions. It goes over like 10 years. 3DS it's counted not... as its own category. Fair. Okay, so yeah, I think it's yep. the DS, which is the 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 higher the DSi, one. the DS. I think those all count. The even Tons maybe 2DS. I don't know what that family falls under. That's a 3DS. That probably falls on a 3DS, I the, would assume. The as well. other thing that throws off the DS sales is it was just a cheaper device. It was it was much cheaper. Yeah. Um, then you know, how do you compare that to a, a PS5 Series X down the road? Just you know, DS is just a cheaper device. People got multiple DSs for the theming, they're just cheaper. Mm-hmm. That's it. I mean, that weren't the DSs, they would be like around a hundred dollars, hundred and twenty-five dollars. Yeah, you're right. To a switch, I mean it's like double, triple the price. Agreed. So it gets it gets weird. The the PS3 was a Blu-ray player. People would buy that for the Blu-ray. Um, so Sony did a good job of putting out their hardware to take advantage of the tech they were kind of inventing. And a lot of people bought a PS3 just for a Blu-ray player. Um, honestly, the PS4 might be the most impressive because people rarely bought a, a, a second PS4 for the theme. They did have a, uh, a PS4 Slim. That's right. But but and the PS4 Pro, but people weren't really buying multiple PS4s that were themed. Um so the PS4 sales are actually pretty impressive um even over the Switch. Hmm. Yeah, it's it the numbers get really thrown off. It's Agreed. it's weird. Good. All right. Good question. Next question. What else you got? I thought about a little bit earlier on, but is using a strategy guide take away from the experience of a game? Right? I mean, what's your what's your what's your gut initial answer to that question? I feel like we've answered this question. We probably have. I feel like we have. Honestly, I just think it's it's for everybody. I mean, like if I mean, I personally always try to avoid strategy guides until I've I've hit my head against the wall multiple times and then Mm. I'm I'm done. Um, And then because my problem is that once I look at a strategy guide, I will go back to the strategy guide much more quickly the next time, the next time. So anytime I run into any kind of challenge, I'm like, uh, let me just look at the strategy guide. And, and, but before I do, I will like, I will try to figure it out on my own. I like that sense of accomplishment, but other people like Michelle does it all the time. If she runs into some problems, she dies a couple times. She'll go to YouTube and try to look how to beat a boss and whatever. Mm -hmm. And sometimes I'll rib her and say, oh, are you cheating again or whatever? Yeah. But it's just the way she wants to play. And and you're right. There's no right around. So so my thing is, is as I'm not going to lie, so I'm playing Oracles of Seasons right now. And and I have been using a guide a little bit. I'm not saying I use it to a T, right? But uh, there's a few reasons why, right? Playing these. I feel like it's okay with old games. I would never use one on a new game, which is weird because it's this yeah. is still a new game to me, but it's an older game, right? So two things. One, I feel like sometimes when I play an old game like this, I, I want to see it all, right? So you have that FOMO. I have the fear of missing out on certain things that, that I would never maybe notice or find on my own unless I'm truly just fully exploring a game like Tears of the Kingdom. I got to be honest, I don't want to do that on an old game, right? Because it takes time. If I had to play Oracle of the Seasons on my own and try to find all these hidden secrets, and it's going to take me a lot of time. And in today's world, there's already a game that on my mind that I want to play next and a game after that. So I don't want to spend 25 hours playing this old Zelda game. I want to kind of see it all and enjoy it and have fun with it. But I also want to move on to the next game when I'm done. So I feel like there's that part. I will say I will not use a strategy guide in dungeons. I like exploring the dungeons and backtracking and figuring that stuff out myself. But sometimes with like a side quest or something, it's just you would maybe miss it. You know, it's not like the uh, like Tears of the Kingdom when I did a new item, I wanted to go, oh, I remember there was that bomb rack. You know, I'm not, I don't know. Just just remind me. I don't want to have to keep remembering where that was. So that's, yeah, that's how I reason. feel sometimes. That's a good reason. I'm I'm similar in that when I play um, old games, like I, I played um, Castlevania Bloodlines fairly mm. recently on the Genesis on Nintendo Switch Online because I'd never played it. Yeah, I don't use a guide, but I will I will spam the rewind. 
Like okay. I am, yeah. I am not in the business of playing an old game and dying 20 times and replaying levels and whatever. I will just rewind. I'm here to see the game. Now I'm not here to have the full experience because the full experience of those kind of retro games are not what I want anymore. So yeah, it's like, agreed. I want to see the game. I played through super, the super Mario two lost levels by using rewind like crazy. Well, that's just a great point. When you play these Mario games now, I never just try to beat it. I always want to play every single level. I don't want to take warps. I want to play yeah. the levels. You want to see the levels. Yeah. You play for the enjoyment. So I, I agree. Right. There's different, different games, different styles of play, but yeah, okay. nobody should feel bad about using a strategy. I agree with that. Yeah. Whatever you want to do. Next question. I have to give a little bit of credit to Barstool Sports because I was watching a, a video or reading something that made me think, is unlimited PTO truly <laughs> better than annual PTO? And what I mean I, by I that knew is you're gonna say that. <laughs> so so what I mean by that is is when I first started at my company, it was unlimited PTO for salary employees. So pretty much it meant you had unlimited sit days. Like you could take any day sick and there wasn't really questions asked. Maybe about eight years ago, we switched to PTO where you get, you know, you get whatever it is, you know, let's say 180 hours of PTO a year, every year, and you can use it anywhere you want. There's no questions asked. But what's truly better? Because I feel like if you have unlimited PTO, it's like you kind of watch it more like, oh, man, I'm not going to just take the day off because I want to. But if I'm sick, I will. You know, where I feel like if you have actual annual PTO, you're going to use all 180 hours. I think there's a study out there that says people will use more PTO if you have a number to it than if it's unlimited. Absolutely. But you know what I'm saying? I Isn't had, that um... crazy? So it's actually like the biggest like corporate scam to advertise as we offer unlimited PTO because mm-hmm. you'll actually use less. Yep. Um, I had a dream job that i i had um in my head years ago and one of their features was unlimited pto take time off whatever blah 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 blah. and i was like that is awesome that is yeah. great and i never ended up getting that job and i actually have never had a job with unlimited pto but i agree with you the problem is you know it's it's not really unlimited because the more you take it they they will see it as abuse yeah if you take too much of it and when you earn it it's yours and you can just use it however you want and everything is cool and kosher, but Mm -hmm. what are you going to do with unlimited PTO? You know, you take a vacation, there's going to be that little pang of guilt. Not everyone's going to have it, but a little pang of guilt to be like, well, I took a vacation last week and I'm taking a vacation next week. And now I'm taking it this week. Eventually it'll be an issue and it might affect you and promotions. and whatever. It's a, you know, it's it's the best corporate scam out there. Yeah. Um, and my my company often will tell people, use your PTO like they want you to use your PTO because a lot of people will just hoard it and then try to, like, transfer it to the next year or get it paid out or something like that. And they're just like, use it, because the reason why you have the PTO is not to then claim the money and get paid yeah. back. It's to relax so that you are more efficient and better at your right. job. Um, so yeah. I just funny. We don't get paid out our PTO. Um, and we can carry over one and a half times of what you accrue. So, for example, if you were to get 100 hours a year, mm-hmm. I could only carry over 150 every year. So like that's the cap. Oh, OK. Yeah. So I can never I mean, I get more than that, but I can never carry over more than 150 a year. I see. Yeah, we can so. only we can only carry over 40 and then they but they'll pay you the extra it. Some companies sometimes you lose okay. it. They, so they will pay you out over 40 but you can only take 40 over okay, which i yeah, don't yeah. i don't mind because they don't want people to amass but, 400 but hours that's like, nice because they'll pay it out <laughs> if, if they will if pay it people, out yeah. well you'll just lose it you don't get it so that's why i, I gotta think that's it. a colorado law yeah like a, oh it is yeah yeah i think that's a colorado law um so you can't hoard it but you can't lose it technically okay. either so nice all right we got two questions here this week the first one comes from Beer Bear Cerveza. Big fan lately. He's been, um, hey, he's my new best buddy, John, because he donated to Extra Life and he chose me. Yeah. So, you know. I think he was drinking a little too much beer, Bear Bear Bear. Cerveza. (laughs) So he asked, do you guys live stream the podcast? I I typically listen via Spotify. This is not the first time this question's been asked, believe it or not. Yeah, I put this one in. Yep. So. We don't. Uh, we don't for I don't want to say 
any reason. I, but I mean, it's just us. It's just looking at faces. You know, it's more work to record video. Um, you oh. know. Do you remember the the early days of Monthly Mayhem where we would edit the videos? Oh, that was a nightmare. Yeah. So nightmare. we do not. We don't even stream. We don't even lively record. You know, like I said, like John said earlier, we we usually add sound effects and posts and stuff like that. It's just it's just easier um, in a way because yeah. we try to. We also like to try to put out the best product that we can to the listeners, right? Uh, so if we if we we don't mess up, we're professionals. But if we <laughs> needed to do something or take a bathroom break or whatever it might be, uh, you know, we have kids. If I had to get up and help, it's it's easy to just pause the tape, you know, so called, and then just cut it back together um, in post. Yeah, this this show is edited quite liberally. There's like sections that sometimes get edited out. Um, and then we, we, we do cuts back when we had sections and, and not today, but like, <laughs> um, yeah, but that goes back to when we, 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 we started you and I doing monthly mayhem videos and we would announce the winners and then they would announce the monthly mayhem and they would go on the, go look at them. They're on the Nintendo dad's channel. And that's what we did before our show. Mm. And, uh, those were fun, but I had to edit the video. So if I was editing out like stuff, then you would see the cut in the video mm. and then we'd have to like produce that video and blah. It took forever, right? You had it all has to be built out. Um, the reason why we don't stream is, I mean, I wouldn't mind streaming it. It's okay if, I mean, we could still edit the show, but you can hear a live version. That's fine. Um, the reason we don't is we use a tool called Zencaster now. And Zencaster does not support streaming. Uh, I wish it would. But the, the nice part about Zencaster is you hear us a lot better in quality because it's recording local audio. So when we when we stop recording later, it's, it grabs the local audio and produces the show with the local audio. So mm. you don't hear all the lagging um, that you might hear in like other podcasts, especially like NVC started was like all online. Um, so it's nice, but we um, it doesn't support uh, Twitch or anything. I really wish it would because it would be cool if we can do the recording and then on Twitch, you can get the live version and you'll get the lags and the that sound out of it. But it would be cool. I would love to have like chat going on as well. Um, I don't know how we'd handle it, but it would be cool to do uh, you can't just a live use, show. This is above me. I, I haven't ever really looked into this. But can you use, does OBS not capture like your your live video screen? So OBS, um, can you just capture the ZenCast web you, browser? You can you can make OBS capture your screen and all your computer audio. And distribute that. It's a pain though because it'll also pick up like sound effects going on. Um, I'm listening to the Met game while I talk to you, and it would pick up that. that it hurts. makes it very, I want to say, like sticky. And uh, I don't really want it to be like sticky. <laughs> That's what she said. Um, so yeah, but I feel like Zencaster could totally support just sending the audio that we're, you know, that we're that you and I are hearing right now, and just send that over to Twitch, and we could just have a live show and have a chat. Um, I think one day they might. And the day they do, yeah, we might just do live stream and you can see us and get all the the bloopers and stuff that we edit out later. I would you love don't want to do that. I'm typically just falling asleep half. I mean, today I feel great, but typically with knowing that I've worked the next day, usually it's people want to see your closet. No, I mean, it's just it's a closet. It's the, uh, I'm one thing that you one thing up. people miss. And when you do the countdown, when so when Drew does the intro for the show, it's hilarious. He counts on his fingers to himself he's like three two one and then he's like wow ah, you know like that sort of thing and nobody ever sees that only i get to see that it's for your eyes only john <laughs> but hambone and coos will be seeing it soon i love it all right speaking of coos we have a question from bob coozy himself he says he's traveling home from a weekend in steamboat springs colorado <gasps> where my wife booked a tubing trip at backdoor sports and a dinner Backdoor grill. Backdoor I think grill. she's trying to tell me something. <laughs> <laughs> Anywho, fantastic burgers at the grill, and here's the list. Which would you choose? Should I read the entire list, John, or is that too much? That's a lot. So this was a question of which one you would choose, and I purposely avoided reading it. So we should go through it. Okay. Go through you want it. Want me to read them or you read them? Um, you can go through it. All right. The first one is I didn't see the top one. The dirty Harry is peanut butter, fried egg. Bacon hash brown cheddar on a glazed donut with powdered sugar 
No veggies and no mayo. Sixteen ninety nine. Voted the top ten in the country. Oh, Dirty Harry sounds dirty. Let me tell you. I'm gonna read them all. Oh, you want to comment? You can comment on them. I, I I I love the Dirty Harry. I'm not sure if I love the peanut butter, but I feel like all of the other like breakfast because that's a breakfast sandwich right there. I mean, it's a it's a burger. Remember now, there's also a, for life. There's also yeah. a, a patty on there. I would assume. Yeah. Um, but I love burgers with fried egg and bacon. Ugh. But the hash brown is like, oh, that sounds good. It should be hash, not hash brown. So I, I would be good for Dirty Harry. No peanut butter. Although I'm sure the peanut butter is good. So maybe I would try it with the peanut I butter agree. the first time. The Big Blue seems pretty simple. Blue cheese, bacon, and sauteed onions. I don't like that one. What about the you? The Mahalo. Grilled pineapple, Swiss, teriyaki sauce. No. Nope. You can add ham for an extra $2. That's a that's a very common flavor combination. I don't, it doesn't sound bad. I t- I teriyaki would try and one. pineapple is a is a thing. I would try, but not not my not my number one pick here. Okay. The G sits is queso, jalapenos, pepper jack, and onion rings. Also sounds pretty delicious. That's my cup of tea right there. I want that with chips. <laughs> chips. All of that the, sounds great with chips. The G thirteen is creamy sriracha. Sriracha. Sir, 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 sriracha. Sriracha. That's what I said. No. You questioned yourself. I just said it's sriracha, yeah. <laughs> Sautéed onions. American cheese and onion ring. Just one? You get one onion ring? Is An onion big? ring. Well, I mean, it's on a burger. Yeah, it's one. Yeah. The John Wayne is a classic barbecue sauce, cheddar, and once onion again, ring. one onion ring. <laughs> I, I am not a huge fan of barbecue sauce on a oh, burger. Oh, I am. I love, I love like grilled onions and barbecue sauce on a burger. That's my I feel, go-to. I make those I every feel, day almost. It like gives you the shits. Good. It's good to have a good shit. I guess. <laughs> How are you doing? It's cream cheese, oh, jalapeno jelly and bacon. This That sounds terrible. Yeah. Cream cheese is pretty good on things and you may not even realize it's there. I guess but... I don't. I don't know what jalapeno jelly is, but that does not sound. That good. sounds actually interesting. What about jalapeno the, jello? No. No? All right. No. The the umami? Umami? Umami. umami. Isn't Sauteed that the bean? Onion? Isn't that the bean? Isn't that the bean? I don't know. I don't, I don't know. know. Sauteed mushrooms and Swiss. Pretty basic. The, no mushrooms. Mushrooms are banned. You know, I used to feel that way until you had some nice sauteed mushrooms. They smell good. I'll give them that. The Dennis Popper. <laughs> that sounds like the back door and they're talking about there, Cruz. Ooh. Jalapeno poppers, pepper jack, onion ring, barbecue, and ranch. That's just too much going on in my eyes. Yeah, I don't like the jalapeno poppers. Why barbecue and ranch? A ranch is I like I'm give me mayo on a burger. Um oh. I don't know why barbecue and ranch is there, but I mean we've seen the rest of this menu. All right, I'm gonna tell you right now the next one is my answer. This is the one I'm going with. This one? This one. La, oh my goodness. La Freak comes with pineapple, sweet chili sauce, Ugh. peanut butter, jalapenos, Ugh. and pepper jack. Listen, I don't know how I feel about pe- peanut butter. But God, somebody made Sorry. this burger, and God, I'm here to try it. I mean, the rest of the ones have that sweet and heat, <laughs> and then you just throw peanut butter in there. I feel like it's going to bring it all together. I you like that it about... says. I like that it says no veggies on it. Yeah, I just I think it's that. funny. It's like this is not healthy at all. There's no veggies. I mean, you talk about the shits. That that's got to be the one. So far, this is my last place one. That's how opposite we are. Wow. Well, let's talk about the Twilight Zone, which has cheddar, 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 peanut butter, bacon, and that creamy sriracha. That I sounds... need to try peanut butter on a burger because it sounds like it's probably pretty good. Where would it's... you spread it? Would you spread it on one of the buns? I assume it's a very creamy peanut butter. I have no yeah. idea. Yeah, but think about it. When you warm peanut butter up, it gets a little bit into that liquidish form, right? So when you put on a yeah. warm patty... Yeah, no, I I would give it a try. All right, the Buzz Lightyear is bacon, fried egg, avocado, and Swiss. That that is my new number one. I love that bacon. Like I love breakfast. A fried egg over hard. You have to order it over hard because I do. Not, if I don't want to take a bite out of a burger and have yellow goop, I feel like me I salmonella. would. I'm the opposite of you. I feel no. like I would want the yellow goo over hard. Plus, it's fun to ask a waitress for over hard. 
Sure. Over. Not over. I'm going to say, are you over easy there, honey? <laughs> <laughs> the afterburner. This is coming out of your asshole. American <laughs> cheese, I'm assuming. Beef chili, sour cream, red onions, fresh jalapenos, cheddar. And I can't even read the rest. I have to scroll. Hold on. No veggies. No, there is. I can't even see it. That's all. That, that's that's a burning sensation. Yeah. Beef chili is what beef chili on a burger. What is that even? What is that? It's like it's having like a sloppy Joe. I know. Like, I just give me another patty. I don't want beef chili. That, does, that sounds way too much with red onion and jalapenos. This one now says fresh jalapenos, which makes me double guess all the other burgers that had jalapenos. <laughs> in I don't it. I don't think it's edited well. I think the like you said, the onion <laughs> ring is like maybe plural. I don't know. Uh, the holy spite holy. Double American, so double, I don't know what that means, double cheese or two, double Two patty. slices of cheese, I would guess. <laughs> two. A corn dog. <laughs> How? What? Friday. How do you put a corn dog on a burger? Dude, guys, we still have like 10 left. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Fried egg, bacon, lettuce, and fry sauce. What, I like what? the ending of this. What's fry sauce? Fry sauce is like mayo and ketchup. Okay. Basically, I mean, it's going to be different everywhere, but that's basically what it is. You just like every one that has an egg in it. Well, this I, one I'm, is egg and bacon, and I love lettuce with mayo. I don't like tomatoes on a burger, but I like but lettuce listen, and mayo. I cannot in my mind grasp the idea of taking a bite and taste an egg and a hot dog in the same bite. <laughs> that know. just sounds disgusting. I, if, right. if I if I if I hack this one, I would just take the corn dog off and just I would love the rest of this burger it's just a it's like a it's a bacon so would you get the holy spite holy spatoli with a bacon cheeseburger yeah what was the other one i um, I would i yeah i prefer american or cheddar over swiss on a burger so i would do the holy spicoli remove the corn dog and give it to cedric (laughs) son i got you he loves corn dogs yeah all right let's go about the mat attack maybe this is like the little mat bacon mac and cheese Mm -hmm. cheddar tomato what do you call these breads the the, the brioche the like the bri- like why does it just say brioche like it's an ingredient it should it's, say like bread. on a brioche, a brioche bun. bun so what is the bun on the other ones uh, t- t- it doesn't say just like fresh jalapenos versus right of the jalapenos makes me concerned yeah, uh, the, elma ed- the editing fudd. is a disaster Let's move on. elma fudd the cheddar pork <laughs> pork Aww. Well, that sounds pretty good, actually. Yeah. Onion ring. Oh, that would now hold on. It just keeps going. Onion ring, Carolina barbecue, and the brioche. What? What is Carolina barbecue? Like Carolina barbecue sauce? It That's got to be. be sauce. This must might be. be my new number one. That it does needs, actually sound really good. I, it does I, need I, some bacon, but the slaw wins, and I love. Carnitas. I don't think it does need bacon. If it has the pork, like I'm thinking, it's like um, yeah, pulled pork. Now that I'm thinking about it, this could be another one that gives you the shits, too. Definitely. The Black Mamba 24, though. Let me tell you about this one. Snake River Farms Toby Peak. Black Truffle. Smote Saute Onion. Smote Sauteed Onion. That's interesting. Fried Egg Gouda and Batchia Briochi Bun. This time it actually spells it out. And this one, folks, will cost you a measly $24.99. That's because it's licensed. It's Kobe. It's for uh, Kobe Bryant. That was his name, Black Mamba. No, Kobe Beef. No, I know, but the, but Kobe True. Bryant was the Black Mamba, and I think he wore twenty four. And that that's would make what, sense because this is made with Kobe Beef. So they're you they're paying a dollar for every burger order. No, I don't. Know. I don't know, but yeah, this is. Um, I don't know. I think black truffle aioli. I feel like I've had it. I don't know. There's just not enough here. I, I don't I'm not into Gouda not either. All right. I like Gouda. I'm going to that's last one. The triple Lindy Swiss and American two patties, lettuce, tomato, onion, pickle and Thousand Island dressing. Yeah, that kind of boring. Plain. I, I'm, I'm standing with my winner of La Frite, pineapple, sweet chili sauce, peanut butter, jalapenos and pepper jack. What's your one? Uh, mine is Holy Spicoli. Uh, Drew, I'll give you extra points if you know the reference to triple Lindy. <laughs> Triple Lindy. You're a younger, you're a younger man. I don't. Triple Lindy. Um, anybody on the Discord, the first person to tell me the reference to Triple Lindy, I will give you a bonus lottery ball for our marathon. 
one, one ball. lottery ball. Should have did that all night. In advance, the first person tag me and Drew and say what the reference to Triple Lindy is. Great. I'll never know until that time. Yeah, you have, you'll have to wait. <laughs> I'll text John, that's it the, to you. <laughs> that's the show. That's it. That's, that's all we show. got. So Wrapping efficient. Yeah. What so do we have coming up in the next couple of weeks besides there, the one and only thing that matters? There is a lot coming up. Um, I, when's Wrestle West? The, the, the Wrestle second. Quest. Okay, so I think, um, yeah, so, okay, so that's back. It was on the list last week, and now it's back on the list. So we'll be back on next um, week. We've got Moving Out 2 that comes out oh, August 15th. I forgot. That's perfect timing for when I wrap up Pitman for me and the wife. It's coming up. I, it could be a marathon game. If you buy it, we could play it on the marathon, maybe. Oh, I'm definitely buying it. Okay. Bring it to the marathon. I mean, you can play it, I guess. You can play it if you Can't want play to. Or wait. Life. Maybe, maybe wait. Maybe we start it. I don't know. Uh, Moving Out 2 comes out August 15th. Marble It Up Ultra, August 17th. I've heard Marble It Up is a very good game. Uh, Vampire Survivors comes to the Nintendo Switch along with, I think these are DLCs, Legacy of the Moon Spell, Tides of the Foscati. Um, it's a four player <laughs> mode. Can you say that again for me. Tides of the Foscati. <laughs> Um, it's this one of these, I think, is the four player mode, and we're going to be playing that on our stream, even though not all of us like vampire survivors. Listen, but we're going to play. I don't hate it. Player. I just don't think the hype's there that I, I don't understand it. Yeah, the hype doesn't match the drapes. <laughs> um, Bomb Rush Cyberfunk. That's a game that people have been waiting for for a while. That's supposed to be like Jet Grind Radio. That comes out August 18th. And then our Extra Life Marathon is on August 19th. That's the most important thing. Don't forget to watch. Just do it. Just watch. And Get your donations in. Don't forget to do that. We are going to be doing a bonus stream the night before, Friday night. I don't know when. We are? Um, follow our channel on Twitch. Yeah, we need to do a bonus test. Um, but we're going to do a little bonus stream Friday night. We're going to play something. Um, we got to do a mic test. So that's going to happen Friday night. Um, so so follow us dads after dark show on twitch is that right dads after dark show right it's a little different on the other ones um, but follow us there and uh yeah dads after dark show we're gonna do something we'll figure it out but we're gonna do a little something that'll be august 18th and then um yeah we're gonna be doing our episode god i mean like you know the in between but we're gonna have an episode that's gonna go out on monday and that is gonna be a live in person with all four of us that's going to be really fun. That could be on Twitch. Still got to figure out how we're going to do the audio for that. We'll probably just use the same mics. Um, it is not going to be on Twitch. Why not? Maybe it could be. Let's make Bear Bear happy. Let's do a live podcast. Yeah, maybe we maybe we do that. Would we be able to record it though? I mean, we can we can we can do the podcast. We can have the camera and then I can just take that audio and do it. I mean, it's you know, we can do it. Yeah, let's discuss that. OK, let's discuss. We'll be that. announcing all the winners from Extra Life on that podcast. Yep. Yep. You'll want to stay tuned for that one. But that's the show. Sweet. I'm, I'm assuming that episode is just going to be about the weekend. Just us bullshitting, chatting. It I up. think so. Yeah, we're not going to have any kind of agenda. Uh, no. Maybe if some news pops up, we can talk about it. But I don't, we're, I don't even think we're going to sit there with a document. It's just going to we'll talk be about the Black Mamba 24. We can do that. We can do that. I want to okay. find out. Yeah, no, maybe. Oh, man, maybe we can tell Coos and he can order these to go. How far is it? Do they deliver? We get Uber Eats. Where did he say it was? No, I think he's up in one of the, the mountain towns. I don't know. So I don't, we can't. I think Rhode Island is within 40 minutes. So I, I'm, I, you know. Yeah, we've got some good food. He knows some good food up in that area, too. Uh, a lot of a lot of my favorite little Denver spots have closed down over the years. Mm. Um, and with a with a family of five and we, we just like Chipotle and we hit, up the, we hit up fast food. I really don't like restaurants anymore. But but um, yeah, with you guys, it'll be more fun. So we'll see what's up there. Get some wings. I, you know, I'm happy with wings. Mm, I love I mean, wings. I'm, I'm happy to go just get a big bucket of wings. At, you know what I mean? Like, I, you yeah. know, whatever. So we'll see what we do. Yeah. All right. All next right. time we do a show, it's going to be live. Woohoo! Woo! So exciting. Good night, dads. Mets win. Mets win, by the way. Mets win. We won a game. Nobody cares. Good night, everybody. <laughs> the Dads After Dark Show is part of the Nintendo Dads family of podcasts. 
You can subscribe to us anywhere podcasts are available, including Google, Overcasts, and whatever. If you're using Apple Podcasts, don't forget to leave us a five-star review. You know you want to. Be sure to join us on the Nintendo Dads Discord in our dads after dark channels for some naughty after dark talk. Leave us a voicemail with Spotify for podcasters and we'll play it on our next show. Check our podcast description for the link. Follow us on threads or TikTok at NDadsAfterDark. Say hello, won't you? A big thank you to Family Jewels for our show's music. That's all for tonight. Good night, you sexy dads. Sweet dreams.